man. Can I encourage you to turn back with me to that passage that we read just a few moments ago from 1 Samuel 17. And as we have our Bibles open in front of us, let me pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. As we jump into our story, we see the scene is set for us in verse 3. The Philistines standing on the mountain on one side and Israel standing on the mountain on the other side with this valley in between them. It's like the start of a movie. We have the opening shot and out onto this scene walks our first character, Goliath. Verse 4. There came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. This big scene, the two mountains and the valley in the middle of it, out onto it walks this big man. The name fits the appearance, doesn't it? With a name like Goliath, he was never going to be weak and shy and retiring. He's over nine foot tall. He would have been incredibly intimidating. And then there's his armor, a helmet of bronze on his head, armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He bronze armor on his legs, a javelin of bronze between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels. And his shield is so big that somebody has to carry it and go before him. We have a clear image in our heads. This is a one-man fighting machine. He's enormous. He's menacing. He's massively protected. He's seriously armed. He's someone who was going to scare and intimidate even the most battle-hardened soldier. His appearance is intimidating. And then look at his words, verse 8. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel. Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, we will be your servants. But if I prevail and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Goliath has walked out onto this scene, physical stature, physically intimidating. And he shouts across to the army on the opposite side, to the people of Israel and says, what are you doing here if you're not going to fight? Pick a man, pick a man, bring him forth. If he defeats me, well, then all of the Philistines are going to be your servants But if I defeat him, well, then you and all of Israel are going to be servants of the Philistines. And Goliath says this firmly believing that nobody can defeat him. He believes that nobody can touch him. He mocks them. He makes fun of them. And is anybody going to be able to defeat him? And from this scene of war, this scene of battle, this scene of confrontation, we're brought down to a family scene. As we meet someone who looks in the eyes of the world very unimpressive, David. We're told in verse 14 that David was the the youngest of Jesse's sons. He's too young to be in the army. And already this contrast is being made between this man of giant stature and the small young boy, David. If this is who's going to take on Goliath, surely there's no hope. For God's people. Back on the battlefield, morning and evening passes. For 40 days, Goliath comes forward and he makes fun of the Israelites. And it's important to remember that in making fun of God's army, Goliath was also making fun of God himself. David is sent by his father to deliver supplies to his brothers. And he's on the battlefield. He sees what's taking place. He hears the words of Goliath. And look with me at verse 26. He's horrified. 
David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The challenge of this young man to stand against Goliath was unsettling the army. And word got back to Saul. And so Saul calls David to him. Saul heard that David was asking the army, who is going to stand against the living God? David can understand why nobody is willing to go up against Goliath. Goliath, who is mocking God, who's making fun of God. Saul sends for David, and David comes before the king, and look at verse 32, what he says. He says, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. David says, people shouldn't be afraid. He says to Saul, the king, do not be afraid. It's a command. It's an instruction. Do not be afraid. And he says that he will go and fight Goliath. Well, Saul finds this a ludicrous idea. 33. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are but a youth. And he has been a man of war from his youth. Saul is looking at this small boy standing in front of him. And he thinks there's absolutely no way that this boy could possibly defeat Goliath. But Saul's not taking into account what he couldn't see. Verse 37, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. David knows that it will not be down to him that Goliath will be defeated. It's only because of God. Saul says to David in verse 37, Go and the Lord be with you. Saul's listened to David, but he clearly hasn't taken it in. Because from verse 38, David tries, Saul tries to kit David out in the best armour. Saul has heard that God is going to be with David. But Saul is still trying to resolve this situation in his own strength and using his own abilities. How often, even as Christians, can we do that? Even in the midst of the situation that we currently find ourselves in, this passage challenges us. Are we relying more on ourselves than we are on God? Are we trying to resolve this situation in our own strength? Are we trying to find peace through our own efforts rather than leaning on God and knowing the peace that is found only in him? David takes off the armor. He picks up a few pebbles from the river and he heads off to face Goliath. From the eyes of the world, this was a pointless endeavour. It was doomed to failure. No way could this young, small, weak boy defeat this experienced soldier of great physical stature. Look at verse 42. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him. He made fun of him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. He laughs. He says, what is this young boy going to do? And look what else he does. He cursed David by his gods. In those words of curse, Goliath shows that this was not just a battle between himself or David. Not just a battle between the Philistines and the Israelites. But this is a battle between spiritual evil and the one true God. Goliath says he will give David's flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. He looks down at this young boy and he says, this is no match for me. Look carefully from verse 45 at how David responds. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head. 
And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. Goliath has physical dominance. David is a young boy. Goliath has the best armor. David has none. Goliath has the best weapons. David goes with a sling and a few stones. But... David has God on his side. David says to Goliath that he comes in the name of God and Goliath is going to know the judgment of God. And David says through what is going to happen, the whole world will know that there is one true living God. And so what does happen? Verse 48. Goliath the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David. David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag. He took out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead. He fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The words of David before the battle itself were longer than the actual battle. The battle between David and Goliath is brief. It's a moment. But what do we see? We see so clearly that those who trust in the Lord have God on their side. The victory was not David's. It was God's from beginning to end. We are in strange and unsettling days. But this passage reminds us that whenever we have God on our side, whenever we know Jesus as Lord and Savior, we have nothing to fear. Corrie ten Boom, a Dutch watchmaker who facilitated the escape of many Jews from her home and later suffered in a concentration camp as a result, said that when a train goes into a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off the train. You sit still and you trust the train driver. If we know Jesus as Lord and Saviour, 